I am Milaya Kumar, Department of Physics in St. Joseph College of Arts and Science. So, dear students, in this session, I am going to explain the positive ray analysis by using a Thomson's parabola method. So, before we are going to the Thomson parabola method. So, first you to know about the discovery of positive ion rays. How the positive ions or positive rays are developed or produced through the experiment. Positive ray analysis. So, in this diagram, you are having the anode and perforated cathode, and there is a fluorescent screen. So, here we take the cathode as a perforated. So, perforated means there is a small gap on the cathode. So, we get the luminous rays which travel opposite to the direction of cathode rays. So, finally, we get the fluorescence on the screen which plays behind the cathode. So, why we call this positive rays or otherwise canal rays? Since the direction of deflection indicates that they are positively charged rays. So, we termed as positive rays or canal rays. Next, there are some properties of positive rays. Here I included few properties about the positive rays. First one, it affects the photographic plate. Once the positive rays passes to the photographic plate, it affects the photographic plate. Then it produces a fluorescence, that is a luminous rays on passing through some chemical element and also it penetrate the aluminum foils. So, once we pass the positive rays through aluminum foil, it easily penetrate the substance. Second one, the positive rays which is deflected by both the electric and magnetic field. When we apply the magnetic as well as electric field, the positive rays gets deflected. The direction of deflection indicates that it is a positively charged ions. Third one, the velocities of all the positive ray particles is not the same. The velocities of these rays ranging from 10 power 5 to 10 power 6 meter per second. It will vary for the different rays. Now we move to the Thomson's parabola method. So first you see the apparatus of the Thomson parabola method. Here we having the P and Q, which are the electric field, N and S are the magnetic field. So there is a discharge tube, anode, perforated cathode. Then there is a side tube T. So, through the discharge tube, we can get the beam of electrons. That means we can get the pressure of 10 power minus 5 m of mercury at the discharge tube. The anode, which is kept at the or held in a side tube of the evacuated chamber, then there is a perforated cathode which means there is a fine hole which is present in the cathode. So, through the capillary tube, capital E, you can get the stream gas of particles is allowed and which is circulated over the chamber A and finally pumped off at F, capital F. So, these positive ions in A 
is then subjected to parallel electric and magnetic field simultaneously. We can apply the electric and magnetic field simultaneously at a positive beam of ions. So in the diagram P and Q which represents the application of electric field and N and S which represents the strong electromagnet which gives the magnetic field. Then finally the beam enters into a highly evacuated camera which is mentioned by G and which is received on a photographic plate. Then we can observe a series of frames on the photographic plate which looks like a parabola structure. On the photographic plate when we examine the photographic plate we get a series of parabola structure. So T a liquid air trap which helps the pressure in G always quite low. So theory about the Thomson method. So here we consider a positive ion of mass m charge G and velocity v. When no electric or magnetic field is applied, what happens means the positive ion straightly strikes the screen at O, which is called undeflected spot. There is no deflection in the positive ion beams. When, when we are applying no electric or magnetic field. Next, we move to the application of electric field and the strong magnetic field applied. Action of electric field. First, we have to find out the displacement of the ion when we passing through the electric field, which is given by the equation S equal to of capital X E by capital M into L by B whole square. So which comes under the equation of motion. So there are few equation of motions are there. How we get those equation here I mentioned through arrow mark that is S equal to of AT square this is the equation of motion. So here A which is equal to XE by M we get those value from basic equation Newton's law F equal to M into A equal to F by M equal to A. So here the F which is equal to the strength of the electric field XE then T equal to L by V those we can get the basic equation velocity v equal to x by t where in x equal to l. In this equation x which represents the length of the path of the ion. So x is the electric field strength, l is the length of the path of the ion. So what happened after leaving the field the ions moves in a straight line and finally strikes the plate at a distance x from o. So that x which is proportional to displacement s and the distance between the field and the plate also. So we can equate the x which is proportional to s we get x e l square divided by 2 m b square which gives x equal to k1 x e by capital M b square equation 1. Here k1 is a constant. Application of magnetic field or the action of magnetic field. When you apply the magnetic field the positive ion will now be deflected by this field in a direction at right angles to that in which it was deflected by the electric field. Thus the beam of positive ions strike the plate at a distance y from O such that O y is perpendicular to O x in the plane of the plate. Then here also we have to find out the displacement of the ion just emerging from the magnetic field. So S dash in electric field there we put S but in magnetic field for the variation S dash symbol for the displacement S dash which is equal to of into B, e, B by M into L by V whole square which gives B E L square divided by 2 M B. Then next what happened means after leaving the field the ions moves in a straight line and finally strikes the plate at a distance y from O. 
here also y is proportional to s dash and the distance between the field and the plate so here we write hence we here we write y proportional b e l square divided by 2 m b which gives y equal to k2 b e divided by m b equation 2 next action of combined electric and magnetic field in order to find out the e by m value we have to eliminate b from equation 1 and 2 and squaring equation 2 and dividing by equation 1 we get y square by x equal to k2 square divided by k1 b square by x into e by m put as equation 3 we know b and x are constants and e by m is constant so we can get y square by x which is equal to constant so this resembles or which indicates that this is the equation of a parabola format so as equation 3 is independent of v particles of say e by m but of different velocities will fall on different points on the same parabola so y by x equal to k2 by k1 b by x into v that is y by x proportional v thus the position of any individual particle on the parabola will depend on the velocity of the particle even though the ions of different values of e by m will lie along a different parabolas by varying the direction of the magnetic field we can be able to trace the full parabola from the results so in knowing the value of coordinates x and y evaluating the constants k1 and k2 knowing magnetic field and x value the value of e by m finally can be calculated thus the e by m can be calculated by knowing those above values next so there is some limitations of the parabola method here i pointed out that so due to the velocity dispersion each parabolic trace is of very low intensity the trace on the photographic plate are blurred and have no definite edges hence accurate measurements are not possible since the photographic plate are blurred fade and no definite edges these are the drawbacks of the para thompson parabola method very difficult to analyze the secondary rays this is another one the influence of secondary rays makes analysis very difficult thank you students